क्लिक द बेल आइकन टू गेट लेटेस्ट वीडियोस फ्रॉम ईकीडा हेलो फ्रेंड्स इन प्रीवियस वीडियो वी हैव स्टडीड अ रैंप वेव एंड द स्लोप ऑफ दैट रैंप वेव इज डिक्रीजिंग नाउ द करंट न्यूमेरिकल इज आल्सो डिपेंड्स ऑन और यू कैन से सिमिलर टाइप ऑफ रैंप वेव but here we have increasing slope as well as decreasing slope and this set repeats itself after a given time interval so first of all go through the question first so that you can understand or you will get the idea what is the question now the question is problem number 6 and this was our last question so please listen carefully obtain the laplace transform of the graph as shown in figure and this graph is look at here in between 0 to 1 we have increasing slope and from 1 to 2 we have a decreasing slope and this set repeat itself from 2 to 4 from 4 to 6 and so on now if we find out the laplace transform first step then it, it is enough so that in between 0 to 1 we have a increasing slope whereas in between 1 to 2 we have a decreasing slope in previous video we have only a decreasing slope now in this question we have a set of increasing slope and a decreasing slope and this set repeats itself after a given time interval and that time interval is important the time interval is in between 0 to 2 we have one set and again next set is started from 2 to 4 or we can say that it is placed in between 2 to 4 and again this set is available in between 4 to 6 in between 0 to 2 the total time difference is 2 in between 2 to 4 the total time difference is 4 and between 4 to 6 the total time difference is again 2 which means we can say that the total time period is 2 now we have calculated time period value now we have to find out the first set or the graph which is present in first period the equation of that graph so let's go through the question first we will find out equation first and that function or the graph which is available in between 0 to 2 is my x1 of t now before moving to equation of x1 of t first of all we will calculate the slope value which is available in between 0 to 1 and in between 1 to 2 again we will write the formula for slope that slope value is m equals to now i'll calculate the slope value first of all in between 0 to 1 so i'm going to write, i'm writing here for time period exists between 0 to 1 we have to calculate the slope value for time period in between 0 to 1 we have to calculate the slope value now look at here y is nothing but the amplitude of that function whereas x is nothing but the time period of that function now my x2 value and x1 value is basically x1 is the initial value whereas x2 is the final value graph is started at point 0 and this 0 is my x1 whereas x2 is my 1 because we have to calculate the slope in between 0 to 1 or from this also you can get the idea this is my x1 whereas this is my x2 because it's a time period now we have to find out the amplitude in between 0 to 1 or you can say at 0 and at 1 basically at a zero your graph was started means what the amplitude at a zero is zero which means our y1 value is zero and as we moving towards the slope till one our graph reaches to its highest value and that amplitude is a means my y2 value is a now substitute all this value in my slope formula what you will get my m is first of all i will substitute y2 value which is a and then y1 similarly then we'll substitute d in denominator x2 value and then x1 what you will get a minus 0 is a 1 minus 0 is 1 so my slope value is a only now we'll find out the slope but in between 1 to 2 in between 1 to 2 what will be my x1 and x2 as i told you earlier this limit can also gives us idea about x1 and x2 so my x1 value is 1 and x2 value is 2 what about amplitude when your time value is 1 at that time the amplitude is nothing but my initial amplitude and when my time period reaches at 2 that amplitude is my final amplitude which is my y2 
so when our time period was 1 or you can say when our time is equal to 1 the amplitude was a which means my y1 amplitude is a and when your time reaches at 2 the amplitude becomes 0 which means y2 value becomes 0 substitute all this value in my formula my y2 value is 0 y1 value is a and my x2 value is 2 and x1 value is 1 what you will get 0 minus a is minus a and 2 minus 1 is 1 and minus a by 1 is minus a so look at here in between 1 to 2 our slope value is minus a whereas in between 0 to 1 my slope value is a so right now this is my slope and i'm going to substitute the slope value in my equation of x of t so first of all now we'll calculate the equation for x of t now look at here my x1 of t equation is in between 1 to 2 so i'll write down the first of all time period now in between 0 to 1 my slope value is a and in case of ramp wave the equation of ramp wave or definition of ramp wave is slope into time slope value was a and the time period is t so the product is at whereas in between 1 to 2 we have a slope which is minus a and the time is t so my product is minus at now we'll find out the laplace transform of this function so according to definition of laplace transform x1 of t into e to the power minus st as the x1 of t is integrated in the range between 0 to 2 now how to calculate t value or time period value basically as i told you while starting a numerical our total time period is actually a 2 because our set completes within a time limit which is a 0 to 2 so my total time period is a 2 so this t is replaced by 2 but the problem is x1 of t is having a different amplitudes in between 0 to 1 and between 1 to 2 so of course my integration will be split into two parts in between 0 to 1 our x1 of t value is at and the rest of the part i am going to write it as it is now from 1 to 2 our x1 of t amplitude is minus at and the rest of the part i'm going to write down once again now here the a is constant and here also minus a is constant so i'll take minus a and a outside this integration so before moving to integration we should know that this a is constant in this integration whereas this minus a is constant in this whole integration so first of all we have to keep this constant term outside this integration So, after taking a common, what you will get? The product is t into t to the power minus st and this will be integrated with respect to time t over the range from 0 to 1. And from here, we have taken minus a common. So, I have replaced this plus sign by minus and the integration limit is 1 to 2. And what we are going to do? We are going to integrate this t into t to the power minus st dt with respect to time period 1 to 2. Now, again, in the last video also, we have seen a same type of product now here also we have to perform the same integration that is integration of u into v and we know that formula integration of u into v is u integration of v minus integration of differentiation of u integration of v now look at it in both the cases which one is my u and which one is my v according to liet formula my t is the algebraic term whereas my e is my exponential term so my u is t where my exponential term is my v similarly here also my t is u and exponential term is my v so just substitute this value over here
here this u is replaced by t and this v is replaced by exponential term similarly in this case also this t which is placed over here and this exponential term which was my v now after substituting this answer we have got now what is the next term we have to find out the integration of exponential function and you know that what was the result so after this thing what we are going to do we are going to find out the integration of exponential function and we know that exponential function integration is e to the power minus t integration is e to the power minus st where in the power we have one constant which is minus s will be placed in denominator that's it this is the our integration final term so we'll move on to next So, after taking integration, what we have got e to the power minus st upon minus s. Here also we have got e to the power minus st upon minus s. And inside this integration, differentiation of t with respect to time t gets cancelled. The answer is 1. And again, this integration value or the integration of e to the power minus st is again integrated with respect to time t. And we know that the integration of e to the power minus st is again e to the power minus st upon minus s and we know that here we already have minus s and after taking integration we'll add once again we'll get minus s so minus of minus s and minus s will become s square so after taking integration of this part what we will get e to the power minus st upon s square both this integration will be replaced by now e to the power minus st upon s square now look at here in both the parts we have a so i'll take a common i'll shift this minus sign in the numerator now this is our result as i told you integration of e to the power minus st is minus s will be in denominator so minus s and minus s become s square so this is i have written and e to the power minus integration will be meant as it is and now we'll substitute the limits first of all upper limit will be substituted first so first of all i'll substitute upper limit in first bracket and minus i'll substitute a lower limit I have substituted upper limit so t is replaced by 1 so all this t is replaced by 1 now I will substitute t value which is 0 after substituting 0 this whole product becomes 0 and this will be e to the power 0 becomes 1 minus I will do the same thing but look at here here the upper limit is 2 and the lower limit is 1 now what i'm going to do i'm going to shift this minus sign inside this bracket so this term will be plus similarly after shifting this minus sign inside this bracket these two terms will have a minus sign but this minus sign i'm not going to substitute right now So, after substituting values and after taking minus sign inside this bracket, we have got this type of result. Now, what I will do, I will shift this minus sign or I will take this minus sign inside this bracket. So, now my equation is. This minus sign will change the sign of all these terms. This two will get plus sign whereas this two will get minus sign.
Now look at here. Minus of e to the power minus s upon s. Here also we have e to the power minus s upon s. So this will be twice. But here also we have e to the power minus s upon s square. Here also we have e to the power minus s upon s square. So this will be also a twice. Now but the remaining things are same. It will not going to change. This is what I have got. Now, next thing is I liquid all the denominators. So here we have S square in the denominator. So I'll multiply and divide only those term where the in denominator we have simple S. So in these two parts, we have to multiply numerator and denominator by S. Now, this is our solution. Now, what is important? The statement of periodic signal. The statement of periodic signal was so x1 of s that I have already calculated and the t value is known which is a 2. So, just substitute all the values in this formula. If you want, then you can take S square in the denominator and if not, then you can keep it as it is and this is our result. So, in this type of question, basically important one is slope if we have RAM. If we have a square wave, then you should know what is the amplitude in between given time period. Now, the third example was they may give you a sine wave. If they give you a sine wave, then you have to use exponential form of sine wave. Now, all the stuff that you should know before moving on to a Laplace transform periodic signals. So, that's all for now. Thank you for watching this video. Stay in with Ikeda and subscribe Ikeda for further more videos. Thank you so much.